hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to do some testing and show you just one way to think through testing things in the Bible Journaling Made Simple workbook. And I'm going to use these stamps from Art Impressions, and it's a church set. I'm going to test a couple different colors of marker. So I need some water-based markers, not other types of markers like alcohol markers and stuff, and a brush so that I can paint a little bit and I will show you how I do some testing. And a really fun technique that I found while I was doing my testing. I'm gonna to turn to one of the pages in the back. This has lots of blank pages in the back for using for all different sorts of things. And this is the stamp set in use on cards. And what I did was paint each one in a slightly different way, paint the trees different colors. Sometimes I did the roof white so it would be snow. Sometimes I did the roof brown and made the church white. You can do lots of different things when you're painting a little, little church like this. So I've made cards with these and there's a whole lot of videos on my other YouTube channel if you're interested in more Art Impressions watercolor. But this stamp set has a couple churches in it and these are not clear stamps. If you use clear stamps and you haven't used cling, they have this little sticky thing on the back once you peel off the white paper that sticks to the block. So we're going to stick it onto a acrylic block. This one has a grid, which is going to help me to get things straightened. I can place this so that the church is upright. And then when I stamp it, I can just use the side of the page or lines on the page to line that grid up and make it straight. I'm going to start by testing Marvy markers. These are just regular markers, water-based ones. They're the, the markers that Bonnie recommends. She's the lady who has come up with this whole art impression style of doing watercolor. And they have a brush nib on one end and a writing nib on the other. And to stamp with these, you just put the color onto the stamp, just like I did. And here I'm gonna line it up with the corner of the page so that I can get it straight. And then press evenly. And you get a little stamped image. Now when you're testing anything, make sure you write down what the medium was, what brand it was, write down what color it was, because sometimes one color will bleed through and another color will not. And one of the things I love about these Marvies, they have the brush nib on one side, but look how thin that writing is. And you'll see it in comparison to some of the other markers in just a minute. This color is called sepia and it actually turns kind of green. So anytime you get any markers and anything that you're going to use, if you want to use it with water, make sure you test it out to see what color it changes to because a lot of water-based markers will get weird colors. They just kind of change into strange things. And this one, you can also, with these markers, you can put a little color on the block itself and then pick it up and use it as paint. You don't have to have a set of paints when you have these markers and that sort of thing. So another way that you can make your church stamp straight is using a stamp positioner. This is one from Art Impressions. It's a nice little one. And it has this thick L block and then a little thin one. And those two come in a set together. And I'll use it with the block that I already had. And I'm going to stamp the image. And it doesn't matter if I stamp it straight, crooked, whatever. So I deliberately did it crooked just to prove it to you. You're going to stamp it onto the little piece and you need the, the block lined up in that L to do that. Then you take the this piece and kind of line up your image wherever you want it. So if you want to put a tree next to something, this is a great way to do that. You can line it up and make sure you get your tree stamped where you want it. And that way then I can take another marker. I'm gonna use a different brand of marker. These are called Art and Graphic Twin Markers and color the the stamp with that, line it up in that L, and then when I stamp it, my church should be straight. And again, I'll write down what color it is, and you can see the difference in the line width on that one. Definitely heavier. And some of these markers are going to watercolor better than others. So some of them you're gonna be able to touch the water on your brush to the image and it's gonna automatically pull the color in. Others, you're gonna to need to use a block to pick up color a little bit more. And in between each of your tests, make sure you clean it really well. I'm using a baby wipe to get the color off and then a paper towel to dab out any excess water that's left behind by the baby wipe. Cause then I can have a pure test. 
And this third one is going to be Tombow markers. And you can use markers that are like in your kids' collection if you want to try those. Lots of different things. And this workbook, the Bible Journaling Made Simple workbook, is a great place to test all that stuff out. There's a bunch of pages at the beginning that have prompts and all sorts of wonderful things to do. But these back pages are great for just random testing of stuff. This last marker that I'm going to use is the Zig Clean Color Markers. And the brush is like a thicker brush brush on these as opposed to the other ones that have more of a rubbery type of nib or a felt type of nib. This one has an actual brush to it and the color says brown on it but it's kind of an orange color. So again you want to make sure you know what colors you're using. Now for the magic. The magic is going to be so much fun. You're going to love this. I'm going to use my watercolors to stamp. And I'm using Daniel Smith watercolors. These are my watercolors I always use, and I know they don't bleed. So any watercolors you've already used that you're sure don't bleed are perfect for this technique. And the, one of the great things about this is that you can just mix up whatever color you want. I can make it as reddish a brown or as brownish a brown as I want. You can do different kinds of greens, all that sort of thing. You're not stuck with whatever color marker you have and you can just mix up whatever you want. You just want to mix up the color so it's not drippy wet. I'm using an 85 cent tile that I got from the hardware store, so it's not expensive to do this either. And I'm dipping it in here. I'm going to test it out on a blank part of the tile just to see if it's working. Seems to be doing well. I want to tap it and get it well, well covered, but you don't want any puddles down inside those grooves in the stamp because then you'll get blobbies. So you'll need to do some testing to kind of get used to what the mix is that you have to use for stamping. But it worked perfectly and now I can go in and paint using the brush, using the same technique as before. And don't worry, I am going to do a close up and show you a little bit better how to paint an image like this once we get to my Bible. But for the testing purposes, I did this real quickly. I always iron after I watercolor because it's going to flatten the paper out a little bit, get rid of a little of that wrinkling. And I just put a piece of paper on top and below it. And it does make things pucker a little bit, but that's because water reacts with paper that way. So looking, looking at the back here, you can see a few things. One is that if I just did some light writing, there's some markers that they kind of have a little bit of ghosting coming through. But when you actually get into the stamping and, and painting, you end up with a lot more color coming, bleeding through, but nothing when you're using watercolor. Now let's work on a Bible journaling page. And so I'm going to switch over to that now that I've got my testing done. And I'm going to do a page for my Be Thankful For November Challenge. If you're following me on Instagram or Facebook or over in the Bible Journaling group, you'll know about this. Each day I'm asking people to think about these things that they could be thankful for. And you can post Bible Journaling pages, lettering, photographs, whatever you want. But it's just a, a prompt to help us to be more thankful this month. So I am going to stay, stamp this church in Hebrews 10, because in Hebrews 10, it talks about meeting with the brethren, and I am thankful for my church home. So that's what this page is going to be about. And I'm going to use the stamp positioner, and I've stamped it using a marker because it's a little harder to stamp watercolor onto that little plastic thing. So I'm going to stamp it on there so I can use the positioner thing. I re-wet the color that I already had on my palette. You can always do that with your watercolor if you save whatever you used in your last project and mix it up for something else. Test it out, make sure I'm ready to roll. And then I'm going to uh, switch over and stamp it into my Bible. So I get the little piece kind of turned the right angle and hold that L down so I can lock my little block in place and have my, my little church stamped perfectly straight up. Look at that. Isn't that sweet? So now I'm going to paint it. I promised you a closer view, so here you go. And you can either use your brush to pull color from those lines, or you can just paint into it and you have a nice brown outline. If you wanted a black outline, you could do the stamping in black paint. Just use a black color instead of the brown. It's kind of fun to do something a little different here. And 
I'm going to kind of create some shadows on the building. That's kind of advanced stuff. Don't worry about that. You can paint it any old way you want. You can paint it in different colors, make a red church, make a whatever that looks like your church and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to add a little bit of color here and there. I'm going to mix up a little yellowish color to do a path because there's a little hint of a path in the stamp. And then I can make it trail over to kind of work lightly with the text that's here and make my image and my text work together. Or you could just leave it in the column there if you wish. But notice that there is no page prep here. The only prep thing I have is a sheet of paper underneath. It's just a sheet of printer paper underneath so that I don't dribble down the side of my Bible because <laughs> that's never a good idea. And I decided to add some trees to it. So I'm just doing some yellow floofies, just making some very loose kind of floofy colors. And since it's fall, I thought it'd be fun to throw in some oranges and some reds to just try to make a little bit of a fall tree scene back here. And if you get little places where the, the paper is wrinkly and collects pigment, you can just dab off a little bit of it. You can paint a little bit more back in. You could wait for it to dry and then paint over it and, and add more to it. The only thing you wouldn't really be able to do is to restamp the church on top. So again, I'm going to iron it so it's a little flatter to work with my lettering, which I already had done. And the typography notebook that I use, I kind of sketch out a couple different ways to lay the text out that I want to have. And then I transfer it, not by tracing all the time, which you can do, but I just look for how many lines each word is. So grateful might be three lines. The, you know, another word might be two lines. And then I just kind of do a transfer. Once I've practiced it a few times in my sketchbook, it's fairly easy to, to, kind of transfer it over without having to do any tracing. So what I decided to write in here is that I am grateful for my church home in real life and virtual because not only do I have a wonderful church that I love dearly, but I also have my virtual church family. And that is all my friends on Facebook. I have this Facebook group that is growing by leaps and bounds. It's amazing. I have been kind of surprised by that. So thank you to all who've joined in from around the world to Bible Journal with us. I added a little prayer down below and some swooshes of color to finish off my page. And it is all done. I hope you enjoyed this video and that maybe it sparked a few ideas in your mind about how you might use watercolor to do some stamping instead of using markers or inks that might bleed. And I will be using more of the other Art Impressions Bible journaling stamps in the future. So keep an eye out for those. I will put a link to their website so you can go and see them for yourself if you're interested. Thanks so much and have a wonderful week. I'll see you again next Sunday.